recordings of um, of me on the track. I haven't done general like talk about car stuff. So continue on with basic car safety. Keep your tires properly inflated. Maybe you already knew that. Another probably. I try. I try to check mine every two weeks. Your your tire pressures. Yeah. That's really good. Uh, another basic one. Keep your washer fluid uh, topped out. Don't run out of washer fluid. Is that important? Yes, because vision is like the most important thing. Keep your windows clean. Mm. Uh, try to almost never kind of like put stuff in the back such that you can't see out the rear window. But yeah, I hate it if I get in a car and it doesn't have washer fluid. Um, so let's see, any other basic car stuff? Nope. That's like kind of like my basic checks. All right, now we can t quickly cover. How frequently do you check the oil, and is that important for racing? Uh, it is important. Oil is very important for like keeping it car healthy. Uh, I don't actually check it that often. Uh, maybe I should check it more. Well, I guess it's a fairly new car. Two thousand and twelve. Um, sometimes I get a bit low. Probably check the fluids more often. Uh, I suppose I should be checking them. Like if I did, if I checked them before every event I went to, like once every month or two, that would probably be good enough. So now I can tell you the things I've done to the car. Uh, so a thing you might think is like, oh, if you have to buy a sports car, it's like ready to go on the racetrack, and that's like basically not true. <laughs> you buy a production car, it's not ready for the racetrack. It's just a fast car on the normal road, uh, and you need to do things before it actually is ready. So, I'm going to pay something to me. <laughs> so the reason why I wanted to do that is I just wanted to rotate the wheels. Um, I've got I've got uh, aftermarket brake pads. So the first modification you'll like make to a car is to for like performance stuff is to improve your brakes. And we can't really can't really see it. So and this is not actually to make your, necessarily make your brakes more powerful. Brakes are actually pretty powerful to begin with. It's to make them more resistant to heat. Because in normal street driving, you don't brake very much. On the track, you repeatedly brake as hard as you can, and the brakes get incredibly hot. Oh, just a bunch of like, little vent lines? So that the, like, no vent lines. But you'll do a few things to deal with the heat. The one you'll have like different pads. Uh, so you can kind of see my pad in there. Uh, everything's a trade-off with cars, so you know, you can make it like more powerful, more heat resistant, but then you get brake dust. Yeah. So you get this like red dust, it gets all over and you can see it on the tire. I actually just clean these, like it gets completely covered. So that's kind of trade-off. Also noise a bit. So you replace the pads, you replace the um, brake lines. Normal brake lines are kind of like rubber with like a little bit of like metal. Uh, but under like, if the brake uh, fluid gets really hot, it can start to like bend or stretch, which will like affect it. So it was like one of the very first modifications I did after the pads is to replace it with stainless steel, stainless steel braided brake lines, which are like more resistant to the heat. And then you can't see it, but you replace the brake fluid. There's different kinds of brake fluid. They sound really pretty, I kind of want to see them. Although they're probably covered with brake dust too. Uh, well, sorry, what are pretty? It sounds like the brake lines would be pretty. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to see if you... Uh, maybe I should have turned the wheel the other way. Maybe you can see it at the back. <laughs> All right, you can see So it. is it that one right here? Oops, sorry. Let me get further down. Is it which one? Is it this one right here? Move oh, your hand. Red rubber. 
Uh, I think you see the hard line there. I think if you look, move your head slightly, you see like kind of coming in the wheel. I should probably just show you a picture from the packet. Uh, yeah, so normal brake fluid um, is less resistant to like heat. So you get different brake fluid. The trade-off is that the, the heat resistant brake fluid tends to soak up, soak up moisture. And water expands and contracts with heat, which you don't want. You want a fluid that like stays the same size. Uh, so let's see, that's brakes. The, um, well, no, because you got the brake fluid inside the inside the cables can itself kind of like expand and contract if it gets uh, or like start to burn or do all kinds of bad things. So you want to replace your brake fluid. The second modification I did to the car is actually the hardest to understand how it works. So you might see that like metal bar running there. Yeah, this one. Uh, yeah. So that is an anti-roll bar. Uh, which decreases the amount that the car starts to rotate when you go through turns. It makes it harder for like the wheels to be at the same height. So it keeps it from rolling, reduces weight transfer, uh, makes it easy, easier to go faster and handle well. But the physics behind it uh, is a little tricky. <laughs> Basically, it makes your car less flexible. Uh, it makes the suspension less flexible. Yeah, so it makes it like the wheels can't oh. come apart as much. Um, but yeah, without it, the car will like roll a lot. Uh, next modification. So you can't actually see it like that, but the wheels are actually slanty. Oh, are you normal, So like if this is the side of the wheel, mm -hmm. like kind of forward, back, left, right, and that, that was perfectly upright. The wheels are actually angled like that. All cars maybe have about one degree. I've got two degrees. If my suspension was like was more flexible, I might be at three degrees. Uh, and the quiz for you is to figure out why. But figure that out. What else have I done? Um, this is an aftermarket uh, air intake. So if you're wider, then you're more stable. Like if you have yes. a table that has really, it's really skinny, then it's yes. going to fall over. So like Confusingly, the width of the car, or the width between the wheels, is called the track. <laughs> no. <laughs> the track of the car, and the pitch of the car is the other way. Yeah, sure. But yeah, a wider car will be, everything is a trade-off. If like you're wider, you're like, um, you're more stable, but also you're harder to turn. That makes sense. Because you got like, more rotational inertia. Yeah. So this is uh, aftermarket air intake, uh, which has less restriction, lets more air into the engine, which is very much a rate limiting thing. It's also, a, it's, this is a cold air intake, and what it does is, instead of sucking in here, air in here, we're like near the engine where it's hot, uh, it tries to, the, the actual intake like down here. Supposedly a bit colder, colder air is more oxygen dense, gets you a bit more power. And then you impair the increased air intake uh, with a less restrictive exhaust. Why is colder air more oxygen dense? Does that make sense? Uh, I mean, you think about like gases, you kind of got the particles like blowing around, like you heat it, you know, they kind of move, move apart. Ah, uh, right, yes. Yeah, okay. it's fixed volume. So it's just it's gonna be less. more dense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you've got the exhaust. Exhaust in the air intake or like why this car sounds, sounds different than stock. You can actually make a car a lot more noisy without making it much more powerful. I probably have about 30% more noise and like 5% more power because of the, uh, the, exhaust. the exhaust in the air intake. <laughs> Did you like the noise? I love the noise. The noise, the noise, uh, noise never gets old. So the wheel slanting in the cold camber. We've got the exhaust. Is that just for the front wheels or the back wheels? Uh, just for the front wheels. I might do the back wheels ago, but they're completely not adjustable on this car, which is unfortunate. Um, yeah, no other performance modifications. That's not true. There is one which is possibly um, responsible for furnish issue. If you look next to the cigarette lighter there, you'll see a little switch. Yeah. Now, I installed that. And what that does is it breaks the connection to the yaw sensor 
when you do that, it disables uh, stability control. <laughs> and you might think you want stability. <laughs> Uh, but the way stability controls is it says, oh, you're turning too fast. We should apply some brakes. And you don't really want that. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes you want to be sliding a bit. So you, you know, turn that off when doing performance stuff. And let's see, I think that's Did it everything come with these, so far. Like, gold drums? Uh, they're in the process of rusting. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, they start off silver and then they <laughs> rust and they just like don't bother to like spend the money to make them not rust. So that's going to go like completely like red color. Well, currently it's eventually. Pretty oh yeah. Oh, sorry. One of the most important uh after brakes, the next most important modification is tires. Uh so these tires are softer, more grippy, uh and they last less long because everything's a trade-off with cars. Mm. Uh, these are like a summer performance tire. Uh, in the bay, I would say everyone should get summer tires because they're grippier. Mm -hmm. um, you don't need all seasons, which are okay for snow. Summer tires actually are fine for rain. Uh, it's just, um, yeah, it's just like snow and like extreme cold where they're bad. But in the bay, yeah, you get the grippier tires because the tires are what connects to the road. The grippier, uh, the faster you can stop, the more you can turn, the less likely you're like to like start sliding, yeah. but they're just like a huge safety feature. Uh, these tires are like slightly wider than stock. They are 205 millimeter in width instead of 185, which helps. Uh, and then the wheels, these are NK RPF 01s, which are like the most common uh, track wheel because they're cheap and really light. It's about 10 pounds instead of maybe like 16 or 18 pounds for a stock wheel. Uh, so that means whenever the car wants to like stop or start, it doesn't have to like change all this like spinning as much like spinning mass. Um, these are also slightly smaller than the stock wheels, which gives me a gearing advantage. So between the air take and the exhaust and like the smaller, lighter wheels, I probably end up like 10% faster than how like an unmodified car. How does it help the gearing? Um, so kind of gearing is like what's the ratio of kind of like rotations of the engine to like rotation of the wheel. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a larger like wheel, it takes more rotations of the engine to um, spin it. With a smaller one, you're getting kind of like, um, sorry, am I getting confused? Uh, larger wheel. Let's say we have 100 rotations of the engine, and you have a larger wheel. You might get, like, let's say a larger wheel, you then get, like, two rotations of the wheel for 100 rotations of the engine. Um, so you're, like, getting the power. But if you have a smaller wheel, let's say the wheel is half the size, uh, there are 100, 100 rotations of the engine go to, like, one rotation of the wheel. Um, so it's like each rotation has, like, more powerful. Um, so with a slightly smaller wheel, this is not half the size clearly from the normal wheel. Um, but it's like noticeably zippier. Um, and I think a lot of that's just from the gearing. So, yeah. But the main things that like make a, a um, stock car like not suitable for the track is gonna be like the brakes and tires not being good enough. Particularly like brake fade. Um, and then like performance wise, getting the camera helps a lot. Brake fade, is that heating up? Or yeah, it's when the brakes heat up and then um, um, then like start to lose. Have you ever experienced brake. that before? No, I haven't because I have <laughs> upgraded brakes and it's a light car. And even braking pretty hard, it's, it's pretty good. The next thing I'll probably do on the car is change the suspension to what's called coilovers, which would make it stiffer and like wobble less and also lower the car a little bit. Which does good things. Let's see. So engine bay. Not really anything interesting here apart from the air intake. Thanks. Sorry. You don't drop it. Huh.
here. Second. So this connects to this. And that's how I get my video. Not safe enough. Yeah. Is the front seat generally safer? I don't think the back seat's like safer. You got a bit like you know this kind of. I guess you don't have an airbag, um, but no, you're so. also on the other hand you're like. So like the the chassis is probably like pretty good. You know, the uh, you'd have to hit something pretty hard for the engine to get like smashed into your legs. Um, but there's less risk of that happening in the back seat. <laughs> Uh, you might also say that the car has like, there's more to crumple before the force hits you in the back. Um, right. Let's see, is this still going? It's pretty reasonable. I can check on it periodically. I should probably. should have gotten me sent home because like each time you get a black flag like a strike uh -huh. you get three of those you're supposed to be sent home but due to reasons I didn't get sent home and I just got to keep going out there <laughs> feeling like I'm going slower than everyone but for some reason um the poor grass on the side of the track so I can show you the video of that just a compilation of me <laughs> seems bad um okay so I don't have um I don't have, like, bucket track seats with lots of bolstering. I don't have, like, proper harnesses. These are, like, street seat belts, mm -hmm. which will, like, let you move around a bit. But there's a hack. So you move your seat all the way back. Uh, that's, like, a lever on the, on the front. Sorry, not the, uh, not the back. Keep the back up straight. Oh, I you can probably go back a little bit if you want. Okay, you might be back as mm -hmm. far as you go. And then you know how like seatbelts lock? Yeah. So you like pull it. So like, like, like keep it like tight and then like almost as tight as possible. Uh -huh. And then like pull it so it's locked. Now you slide your seat forward. Oh, and then you're stuck in. And then um, you're much more stuck in. And you'll slide around with us. Uh, who gave you this trick? Uh, someone on the something. internet. <laughs> someone in like the... Let's adjust that, and it's good. You'll feel the um, weight transfer of the car. Like when we're braking, you'll like feel it, you know, in your chest. Cool. Oh, that's... So I have um, paddle shifters. So this is an automatic, but it had because Miranda couldn't drive a manual. Mm -hmm. But the paddle shifters let me manually change the gear, which makes it useful. Oh, I feel too far back. Oh well. Okay. So question is where. Yeah. 
So, rain is unfortunate, but we'll see what we can do. So this car has like 100 wheel horsepower, which is not very much. But the thing is, most people don't ever like get the power their car has out of it because uh, they don't like rev it high enough. Because I'm manually controlling the gear, I can like rev. get all the power that the car has. What do most cars have? Like a Sienna minivan? Uh, a Sienna minivan. So the really thing that matters is like weight to power ratio. Oh, okay. So a Sienna minivan will have more, uh, but like more weight. So a Sienna minivan is probably about the same uh, power to weight ratio as this car. But as far as like track cars, track cars go, like people will take, it's probably the lowest. Uh, like it weighs 2,500 pounds, 100 like horsepower. Um, a Miata, which is like the like uh, hobbyist track car, considered pretty weak, has about 130 horsepower, but only weighs 2,000 pounds. So. If you're ever going to copy anything I'm doing here, vision, 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 looking, always looking, never kind of like, you know, accelerating hard where you can't see. Um, yeah, so like cutting the corners is like a bit fun, but you really got to make sure that you can see. Yeah, so traction's pretty good. I can still brake pretty like hard and late. <laughs> Did you feel the uh, the here the like the like kind of like gravelly grinding noise? Yeah, what was that? That's the uh, ABS. Gotcha. So the ABS can prevents the wheels from like locking up. Uh -huh. If the wheels stop spinning and you're still moving, you'll start to like slide, which you don't want because then you're out of control. So the ABS is a safety system um, that like means you can like hit on the brakes as hard as you want, and the car won't let the wheels lock up. Uh, Formula One cars don't have this. Um, and then therefore you have to be really skilled, um, like in a Formula One car, so that, so let's see, let's like hit the corner. never starts racing I like was moments like like I knew I was about to crash and my heart still didn't race it was like still just perfectly calm it was just a oh shit <laughs> I'm like oh I didn't think this was supposed to happen in this story <laughs>
Um, so there's like a kind of big empty parking lot in Alameda Island. Um, I'm sure I took Miranda to like kind of practice driving. In 800 feet, turn right onto the ramp. I'm really huge on uh, doing anything too much like without supervision. Oh, I guess supervision also helps if there's someone to call. The parking lot's really big, it's like pretty good, except for it's close, it has like a... Turn right onto the ramp, uh, then keep right at the fork. A few, like, concrete pylons. Just make it a little... Look at those wheels, look at how wide these wheels come out. Aftermarket. So, like, people who modify their cars fall into the, like... Right at the fork. In which case, often, you know, performance isn't improved at all. It looks like it should be faster, but it isn't. You put like fancy in one and a half on miles. Heavy. Take the exit on the right. Modifying, actually modifying performance. Um, there, I'm in fourth gear, which has like. Half a mile. Take the exit on the you right. Can hear, like the noise between like third and fourth. Uh, so like the noise from the um, from the air take and the um, uh, the noise from like the air intake and exhaust. Apart from just like sounding good, nice. Take the exit on the right. Driving, because it's like this audio feedback um, over like what the engine is doing. Like here, I'm like off the gas. You hear it immediately when I go on. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of just helpful to like, you know, keep me in touch with like what I'm doing, how hard I'm hitting the accelerator. And so it becomes kind of like a one when you drop into gear because that's one of the keys. Uh, really higher fast. RPM. Actually, there is a mix. So like one element of the sound is how fast is the engine spinning. Uh, the other is how much air is being sucked in. So the air intake kind of makes noise when I'm like sucking in. In a quarter of a mile, turn left. Do you think learning how to do performance driving has helped you like normal driving? Yeah, so there's a bit of a risk in that you probably like get better control of the car, better vision, but you're also tempted to drive faster. <laughs> um, I can't and so whether this. it kind of whether it kind of like balances out as you being safer or worse. Turn yeah. left. I think I'm safer than most drivers, but um, I guess but not as safe as I could be, like if I was maximizing for safety. Making so many modifications to your car, you must care about it a lot. And I care about really, it a lot. Really not want to get <laughs> I so I crashed. Yeah, know this about me. I crashed one of these in November. At, not on not on the street. Uh, trying to practice drifting in the car. And I, I was incredibly sad. Normally Miranda and I sleep in different beds, but I was like, I need to sleep with you. I'm so sad. Okay. Um, generally, driver's education in the U.S. is really shit. I feel like I meet people here, and like, they're much worse drivers than people in Australia. You're from Australia. Yeah, I grew up in Melbourne. Do they have? you have to go to in Australia? They have. Camps you have to go to? Uh, no driving camps, but you do have to like keep this log book and um, like kind of record that you have 120 hours of practice before you get your license. Oh, I which actually takes quite a lot, you know, if you do it like an hour every week for two years. 
see if you get it. head checks, you know, I look in my mirror, like do I see anything, and I look in my blind spot. And if it's clear, I'll look back at my mirror. And then change lanes slowly. If some people get anxious about their lane change, so they try to do it quickly. Mm -hmm. You do it quickly, you give people less chance to um, see what you're doing. If you do it slowly, people like have time to, to notice and like react. Mm -hmm. Like maybe there isn't like room, they're too close. But if they see you do it slowly and they see you indicate, you know, they have time to break. So sometimes I do really slow, lazy lane changes on the highway. I appreciate that. I've been driving my, or riding my wheel a lot. I don't have a car here. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes I go on the streets. But if I'm next to a car and I don't know, like, how good they are, at yeah. <laughs> they'll check for a, a loan to your car. I'll tell you about my car experience. I drove my parents, this is the Chrysler 2001, mm -hmm. for a while. Then I got in a wreck and I was like, I'm never driving again. Oh, well. In 600 feet, How turn wreck, right. How did the wreck happen? Uh, I was listening to the radio and singing and crying at the same time. Oh no, that's like probably too many things. <laughs> yeah, and then I didn't see the giant Porsche in front of me. <laughs> Porsche or Porsche? Porsche. Oh, that's a bad car to hit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no one was hurt, fortunately. I did break. Yeah, I can turn it that way. So, but then I decided, okay, actually, I am going to start driving, but I'm going to have my own car. Turn right. Yeah. Have to pay for it. And so I got, uh, it's also 2001, 2001 Jaguar off of Craigslist. Oh, shit. <laughs> Yeah, the car might have been cheap, but I don't know about the maintenance. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> what was it? Uh, I think uh, at least three thousand dollars. I think into that car. No, I'm like what mud model Jaguar? Uh, XJ8. XJ8, what year? Two thousand one. Fancy. It was really smooth. My grandparents drove Jaguars. My uh, grandfather didn't want a German car. It's reasonable given that, you know, he, he spent World War II in hiding. Jaguar is English. Yeah. Well, who knows? Probably has a German engine by now. Quarter of a mile. Seriously, Keep like, right at like, the fork. More like drive cars in downtown and smash them into stuff. Then like they just drive me. Ah, there's, there's stuff wrong with this car. What's wrong? Uh, the steering was like a bit of a vibration in the wheel. Like, Keep like, right at the fork. Steer, I go over a bump and the wheel is turning. Like that's not supposed to happen. Is it not? In a quarter of a mile, turn right. Supposedly it's aligned. Maybe it's come out of alignment. It's possible. So, like, it's drivable. And yeah, it's not, not what it was. Are these things more noticeable at high speeds? Uh, some think different things are like. Why did you have two? Well, no, because I crashed the first one. 
Oh, so you bought this one? Yeah, I bought this one after. I didn't, I don't know, I didn't want to get a... This car was actually just like, really right now, like the right car for Miranda and me. In the sense of, um, you know, automatic, but with like, kind of good um, paddle shifters. Um, like, not that expensive, although it was much more expensive. Low speed, but like much less room. Um, I feel like more traffic than I would like to see. Yeah, one of the reasons I really wish I hadn't crashed the other one is it didn't have any of these troubles, which are costing me. In 1,000 feet, turn left. Like the first time I tried to install the exhaust, I couldn't like undo the bolts for like the existing one, um, which is really annoying because to work on the car, I don't know, like you've just seen the garage, I can't work on it there. I have to like turn left, pile all my like tools into the car, uh, and then like find someone who'll lend me the driveway. So, you know, I did all of that, piled everything on there, got there, couldn't get the bolts off. Had to come back a second time. How'd you get them off? Uh, so actually, what, what is this guy doing? Um, I had it at the mechanic for like a different reason. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I just had him like loosen the bolts for me. Uh, but now I own a, a, an impact wrench, so I'm probably good. Well, I've like the more experience I have doing car stuff, the more like, oh yeah, stuff like that comes up, but I know what to do. Mm -hmm. or I know the kind of things I could try. Whereas it's the first time I have to go to my mechanic friends and be like, what do I do? The um, changing the brake lines, I had a guy help me with that. It's just like a friendly neighbor. Oh. That was really annoying. Have you done it before? No. No, like the first time I, I did it. The second time I did, like I just like, I hate to have it done. In one thousand feet, sharp right. Sharp right, then turn left. Oh no, I'm definitely having as much fun as you are. I, think. I spent all this time thinking about car stuff, and um. Most people aren't interested. Most people like. Turn left. In one 
5,000 feet. Turn right. Turn go right. Trying to go for comfort mode is like some people you put their foot on the um, like put their foot on the brake and just like hold it there. But actually, if you want to come to a really smooth stop, you'll like brake um, and then in 600 feet, as you slow turn down, right. Actually, release on the brake and let the car kind of roll to a stop. Uh. And you'll see how like the car isn't like dipping up. Like if I like brake hard, the car's gonna like dip and then like come back up. But if you do it slowly, you like reduce that and come to a very smooth stop. Gotcha, so you want to turn right. harder and then kind of soften Yeah. Off. And then you can like almost get it to like, you like no perceptible like uh, dip. Yeah, with the Mustang. In 1,000 feet, turn right. Turn right, then turn left. Oh no. They put up fencing. They put up fencing. You usually got in that way? Or? There used to be normal fencing, you could just kind of come in. Also, the online says that the motorcycle guys um, aren't there on the weekend. I guess they are. So they do motorcycle training. Um, but yeah, so this is where I was like, we can just toss the car around. Hundred feet, turn right. Gauging if it's long enough to yeah. for doing any like I don't know for like spinning around or something. I assume you need some kind of s speed at first to actually make it work. 
Yeah, so let's see if I go relatively slow. We do have in the ring, so. Disable traction control. Straighten the wheels. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go forward, I'm gonna brake. I'm gonna put all the weight on the front wheels, less on the rear wheels. I'm gonna turn at the same time, exceeding the traction budget. Hopefully on the rear wheels, swinging the back of the car around a little bit. Why don't you roll when this happens? Why don't I roll? Yeah, like. <laughs> uh, center of gravity if the car is too low. Gotcha. Oh, that uh, makes sense. So it just generally won't go over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Someone told me it's hard to roll this car. Uh, definitely at this speed, I don't think I will. Now let's try it. Actually, you can often want to want a little, like a little bit of like the rear sliding because it lets you rotate the car faster. Uh, turn faster. Oh, interesting. I used to ride horses, and when we were turning the horses, oftentimes we would want them to like cross their back legs like, so oh, over because that would make a faster turn. <laughs> I do because I'm not that good. There are people who like have incredible control at all times, like they're just perfectly comfortable having some of the, the car sliding a bit. That's just like normal. <laughs> I've heard that the uh, big parking lot 
at the uh, the horse racetrack here in Albany Falls. It's actually a big open parking lot, but I can see that not being used very often. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to use it for other stuff. Maybe we could try going there probably another day though. Check on this the wrong thing and see what we're talking about. Vision, vision, vision. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You made these notes when you were with the instructor? No, I made them last night thinking about what we're oh. talking about today. Smooth. Being smooth is really important. In um, steering or what? In everything. <laughs> everything you do uh the thing that you'll be the most least probably the least smooth in is braking you like brake real hard mm -hmm. but everything else you want to do like jet like gradually as like gradually and like as possible because if you're not gradual you're putting a higher peak force and that's kind of like knocking something with a hammer yeah um because you're trying to like get the maximum like grip out of your tires so then if you make a peak in that maximum grip it's gonna you like easily like push it over yeah. but if you do it kind of like you know, same amount of like overall work in the physics sense, you know, you kind of like accelerate the car like constantly get to a certain velocity is like better than if you like kind of like accelerate a lot and then you're like accelerating less. So they'll kind of tell you again and again, whatever you're doing, be smooth, like mm. never just like floor it. Like you're so coming out of a turn and you're like getting like, and you're like, um, yeah. So here's like kind of a, a, how a turn will look. You'll be like braking. You'll be like hard on the brakes, mm -hmm. and then you will like kind of gently like come off. If you jump up too much, the car's like gonna pop up, can unsettle the car. Mm. Uh, so you like kind of like and like like gradually come off doesn't necessarily mean like you know over five seconds. It like can be like within like half a second, mm -hmm. but there's still a difference in like kind of coming off gently in like half a second or one second versus like popping off. So I imagine, like, whatever you're doing is plotted on a graph, and all the lines need to be smooth, yeah. even if they're... So, like, braking might look like this, like, you come up, like, really quickly, you're holding it, and then you're kind of, like, trailing off, depending on what you do, what's called trail braking, and then you're, like, kind of, like, come down, like that. Mm. And then, you know, your accelerators, you're coming out of the turn, might, like, look like, like this. Um... But there are two reasons for that. Like one is generally settling the car, and the other is like the um, your traction budget. So like your car can like be like accelerating in like any direction. Braking is just accelerating backwards. Yeah. <laughs> Turning is just accelerating left. So like one of the reasons why like you know I drive this car with a small engine. That just means this car is like bad at like accelerating in this direction. It's really good at accelerating in all the other directions. Huh. Um, and that's why like, why it's still fun because I can accelerate kind of like that way, like going really fast, you get good g-force, um, even if it's like less in that direction. Um, but if you like brake and turn, like, uh, like, you know, to stay within the traction budget, braking and turning, you kind of like have to do less of both. Mm -hmm. If you like did the same magnitude of both, you'd be here uh, and you'd lose traction. Yeah. So braking in a straight line is often like most of your like hard braking, do it in a straight line. Because if you turn, you're now using some of your, like, uh, traction budget for turning instead of, like, braking. Same thing accelerating. Like, you can't... Definitely in a powerful car, and even in this car, if you're trying to, like, punch it too hard on the gas while turning, um, like, my front wheels will just, like, start to, like, lose traction. And I'll, like, instead of, like, going like this, I'll, like, go like this. That's, like, understeer. Mm -hmm. Um, I like this diagram. It gives like a very vectory, satisfying yeah. <laughs> way to think about it. So the surprising thing about this, uh, like it's like completely not, not obvious, is that your traction budget is like pretty much isomorphic or like an iso lateral. Like it's pretty much the same in every direction. You might think that you might have more traction in one direction than another direction, mm. but actually it's kind of constant. Huh. Um, and so a thing you can do, like, if you're recording data, I haven't been recording data today, is you can, like, plot where, like, you know, if you have, like, whatever, 
let's imagine we have a really good car, so this is like 1G, this is like the 2G circle, so you're plotting the forces acting on the car, mm -hmm. and you're like, you know, confer, you like, say, where are your forces? If your forces are kind of like further out, you're like using your traction budget. If like, maybe you're like, your braking force is down here, but you're like, turning force is only here, it's like, oh, you're not turning, you could be going faster in the turns. And how um, would you track that based on your speed and location? Speed and location? Uh, like, how do you track? Like, where you could be... I mean, if you're looking at this, I mean, you can look at it, you know... Uh, What's it look like when you translate from that to here? Yeah. So, let's just find the video. Are most of your videos about cars? Yeah, I tend to like this stuff. Uh, yeah, I don't have like a YouTube thing otherwise. So here's like waiting in line for your session. And so this, here's um. Ah, uh, it actually shows that circle. Yeah. So I I record data like with the phone and I record video and then like I stick it like I stitch it all together. Wow, so cool. I can like review. Um. So here you'll see. And do you want to be using all of it all the time? Using all of what? The uh, being as close to the edge of the circle as possible. Yeah, I mean, you want, that's that that's the whole challenge. The whole challenge of um, performance driving is using all the grip that you can. If you're not using all of your grip, then you're not going as fast as you could be going. Mm. Um, so you see here, that's like my RPM, which lets me know what gear I'm in. Um, I don't actually have. Uh, I think I really, really want to know is uh, that's like throttle. How much, how heavy am I on the throttle? I don't have for the brake. Mm -hmm. I just don't have. I just can't get that readout from the car. Um, but what I do have is like that's accelerated accelerator is just like um, the forward backwards direction there, so I can see how much I'm like accelerating or braking. So you'll see here. So you'll see as I'm going through the turn out there. So as you become faster. Does it matter? Like, do you have less traction? As you become... If you change, say, 20 miles per hour, if you accelerate 20 miles per hour when you're going 80 miles per hour, is it different from when you were going 20 miles per hour? Uh, probably a bit. I mean, it's more about, not about how fast you're going, it's about, like, how much force is, like, acting through the tire. Mm. So um, we'll still have a grip on the road even when you go really fast. Um, yeah, so like other factors would like determine like whatever your max speed. Um, but like if you're generally you assume that you know if you're not accelerating you're just constant speed then you're not using there's no force acting. Mm. Um, no force like acting through the tires. And you're not using a traction budget. So like generally you always want to be having a force somewhere. Like, you almost never want to be, like, in the middle, just, like, coasting. Like, mm. this is not, this is, like, an almost true, always true rule. So you always want to be accelerated.